you talked about a couple calls that you were on yeah. between you, a national consultant and a regional consultant, and you said it would be really eye-opening um, regarding the tone and how you were talked to. Why did you feel the need to record that conversation? That's a great question because I don't know if you knew or you did this too when you were in Chicago, but um, did you ever listen in on a recorded call or did you ever listen in on like one of your... Like you were a leader, right? You had yeah, yeah. So did you ever listen in on those car on those guys' calls on mute? We no, no. So we did that a lot, um, which is a good learning tool. But I don't think is you know kind of breaks the whole privacy thing of a private conversation. <laughs> but we often listen to each other's calls, and I would just be on mute. Um, so I was kind of trained to do that. I would often like I would record them to listen to them later. Um, which I was encouraged to do. I was told to record, you know, to download the record a call app. Um, we record conference calls. We record a lot of stuff. Um, so I was just kind of trained to do that, and I wanted to keep it, just to listen to it later, because I wasn't in a sane place. I was sleep deprived. I was really very exhausted. So I wanted to kind of hear it, you know, from a, a logical standpoint later on. It was really sad to listen to later because I. I sounded really crushed. I sounded like I had no confidence. I sounded like small. And the way they were speaking to me was, you know, interrupting someone is very rude. They were constantly, um, the, the national consultant, she was constantly interrupting me. I wasn't able to speak. It was very demeaning. It, it wasn't a two-way conversation with, of me deciding to close my business. It was a, I mean, I think Rachel described it pretty well, the way they speak to, the way they speak to you. When you're an owner, it's very different than when you're in the field. There's no respect, you know, and I don't know if I don't, here's the thing too. I don't think they are doing it to be bad people. I think they're bred that way too for years and years. And they think that's normal on how you should speak to a friend or a business partner. There's so many HR violations in those conversations, <laughs> but because you're your own you know, owner, your own business owner, that's, you can't go to, there is no HR, but the way they speak, spoke to me in that final call and the way they, they speak to you and as an owner and not everyone I'm sure but it's very different it's it's ridiculous hello 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 how are you hey good how are you is that yeah okay cool I wasn't sure hey guys <clears throat> sorry I'm back hey if you guys oh. I wouldn't mind if I do you mind if I merge it on because she's, we're dealing with like financial stuff together? And if that's call. Oh, um, I don't care. I mean, I guess I'd rather just talk through stuff with you first so that I can get a feel for like where you're at with everything. Okay. And then if we want to merge her in. After that, we can do that for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, that's so fine. I just want to... Okay, cool. So I just want to talk through and make sure that, you know, we kind of understand. It's important for me that you understand, like, the why behind everything. Because the last thing I want you to think is that, you know, we just woke up one day and, and we're like, hey, I think we're just going to really mess with life today. You know, mm -hmm. obviously, that's definitely not <laughs> definitely not what we're doing here. Yeah. So it's important to me that you understand, you know, the position that your business is in, the position that you're in, and sort of how that affects the relationship that you have with all of these people that are keeping your business afloat financially, right? So I think, you know, you fought it out for a long time. I know you spent some time there, and I know that, you know, you've recently really been digging in and being way more on top of stuff, but I think that unfortunately – we're still realizing that we're missing major key things that we would need to do to really turn it around and get it going um, to the point where you can really pull yourself out of this situation and, and really start gaining positive traction. And so because of all of that, we look at it and we say, okay, well, how can we come through for the most and to help you, you know, continue your career and, and really grow and develop and become unbelievable at this business, the easiest thing for you um, would be to have full support and go on a retrain, right? Um, yeah. And so it's, it's important to me that you understand, like, that's sort of where we're at. And, you know, in the real world, if you were anywhere else, you'd be 
you know, out of business and owing someone this money that you're short. Um, and so in our situation, we're willing to say, hey, if you work with us in terms of closing down the business and, and um, making sure that you're reliable and responsible to do everything that you need to be doing on your end, then we're open to working with you financially to help you get to a location where we can really give you a proper retrain and you can really dig in and, you know, get things cooking again if that's what you want. At the same time, if you look at it and say, hey, it's really nice of you guys to help me out with a couple thousand bucks to help, you know, get me out of my lease or to help with the relocation or whatever, but at the end of the day, I'm just burnt out. I just don't really want to be a business owner in this business anymore that's fine too. And in that case, we can just close it down. You can stay in Oklahoma City, you know, and and not have to worry about your apartment and and find another job. So again, it goes back to, and I think it was you that I was having this conversation with, so correct me if it wasn't you and and this is new, you know, the first time you're hearing it, but I think what you really need to do is ask yourself, do you really want to be in this business? And do you really want to be a business owner and do you really think that you're going to want to keep doing this for the next five plus years? And if the answer is yes to all of those things, then we can definitely work with you to try and help you out as much as we can. Not saying that we're going to be able to cover everything, obviously, because I don't even know what that is or what that means, but we can definitely help with the relocation. But I would say, hey, the relocation or whatever in the, in the long term, in the grand scheme of things, that's really not anything because Hopefully, if your goal is to go on a retrain, it's because you want to be in this business for the next five years. And because of that, you look at this like, okay, this is just a minor temporary glitch in my financial situation. But over the next six to nine months, I know I'm going to make all that money back tenfold to be able to cover whatever debt I might incur by doing all of this stuff. Because I know that if you go and you work with and you do everything the way it needs to be done and you really dig back in and you rebuild a crew and all of that stuff, not only is your short going to get cleared up, but you'll probably end up making some really great cash working on owner's profit to be able to put towards whatever, you know, bills you have or whatever debt you're racking up or whatever. Mm-hmm. And again, hopefully you're in this business to wait to make way more than 10000 bucks or whatever it is that you're up to your eyeballs and bills with. So yeah. that's why to me it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. It shouldn't really be about your wife and the finances and all that stuff right now because I'm asking you to think much bigger than that. I'm asking you to think about is this really what you want to be doing for the next five years? And if you look at it and you say, Hey, well, kind of, but I also kind of need my wife's support and I also kind of need her to be on board with what's going to happen in the immediate future with the bills, and I really need to make sure that I, you know, do this, this, and this, then I'm going to say, okay, well, then that probably means no. You're not really willing to do whatever it takes to become a business owner in this business. And that's totally okay. You know what I mean? Like, that's 100% absolutely okay. It doesn't mean that anyone thinks any less of you or anyone you know, thinks that there's, there's, you know, that's bad or whatever. It's 100% your choice. Mm-hmm. But the reality of the situation is that's something that you should be able to make the decision on because it's your, it's going to be your career, your focus. Yeah, I, I don't have an answer right now. I don't know. Because, like, I, I really don't want to leave Phoenix. And I've been, like, asking about, like, is there an opportunity in Phoenix? And there is, but, like, someone else has already taken it. So that's, like, a big deciding factor for me if I'm, like, well, I don't want to leave, but, like, the assistant manager, like, already. I thought, the, I thought the issue was you can't leave Oklahoma City because of your apartment. No, I mean, if I go to a retrain, I, I mean, I'm I'm trapped in Oklahoma City because I, I, I can't financially get out. So that I want to... I need to figure out how to do that. But um, so that's... Well, like, I, mean, I, I think... I think... Because here's, here's the thing, then I think that that's probably a no then, right? So if you're like, hey, I kind of really want to be a business owner, but only if I can be doing this program in this city for the rest of time, then that probably is a no, right? Because I think that, again, what I'm asking is like, 
you have such a desire to own your own business and to do this type of thing where you're developing people and training people and, you know, calling your own shots and doing your own thing, if that's the case and that's like the number one, your burning desire, you'd probably be motivated to do that just about anywhere if you know it's going to eventually get you back to your long-term goals, which might be to settle down and have a family or do whatever you want to do in Phoenix for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I mean, for me, there were many different times throughout my career where something came up and it was like, okay, well, do I just have a burning desire to just continue to like make a decision at the fork in this road? But at the end of the day, if I really wanted to be in this business and I really wanted to be big in this business, then I had to make a couple of short-term sacrifices and move places I didn't really want to move and do things that I didn't really want to do. But I did it because I knew I was on like a 15-year plan. Right. And my 15 year plan Mm -hmm. meant that 10 years into it, I could live wherever I really wanted to live because I didn't even have to run an office anymore. And that was like my game plan. So I was okay living in Chicago, which I like definitely was not motivated by personally because I owned a condo in San Diego. I had just bought a brand new convertible. I was like finally excited to enjoy the fruits of my labor that I worked so hard for. And I had to like leave my beautiful condo that I just moved into (laughs) and take my brand new convertible that I barely got to enjoy yet and go to a place where it's winter where I couldn't drive my car and I wasn't enjoying my condo and I was living in an apartment with a bunch of reps again. But I made that choice because I knew that that was a temporary short-term thing and I had to, if I wanted to have the long-term goal that I really was the most important thing to me, I was able to kind of make that short-term sacrifice. But I think if you're sort of at the point where you're like, hey, that's great, so good for you, but, like, I don't want to make any more sacrifices. I just want to, like, finish out my term in my apartment in Oklahoma City. I want to create a life for myself in Phoenix, and I don't want to keep having to move around, and I don't like the unknown of maybe there's going to be an opportunity for me in Phoenix, maybe there's not, and I just don't like that uncertainty. Then I think that's your answer. Then this probably just isn't for you anymore. It's not a part of your goals anymore. It's not big enough of a driving factor for you to take the good with the bad anymore. And that's totally okay, but I think that's probably your decision. I mean, I haven't really made a decision. It's just, like, that just frustrated me because that was something I was working towards. I was like, I don't know what to do to, like, qualify to move back. And then I'm like, well, I guess I'll never have that opportunity. That's a silly thing to say because, like, literally 30 days ago, we didn't even know there was going to be an opportunity for to be in Phoenix. And, like, 30 days from now, there's going to be 10 other things that are potentially going to open up. Like, I I don't know if you're not on the conference calls that we have, but we're constantly talking about how there's Walmart in the works. We're constantly talking about how there's, um, you know, different grocery chains in the mix. We're constantly talking about how there's Invisalign and all these other things coming through in Costco. We're talking about how there's going to be more services coming. We're talking about how we're going to start selling, you know, potentially like mortgages and car financing and all this crazy stuff. We're selling energy now inside of Sam's Club. We're selling cell phones inside of Sam's Club. Like all of these divisions are doing all of these things and they're testing them right now. And if all of these things roll out or even half of these things that we're testing are rolling out, we're going to need like three times the owners across America that we that we have right now. Yeah. Which literally means that there's probably going to be an opportunity for three or four more owners in Phoenix. When those are going to come to fruition, nobody knows. What that's going to be, nobody knows. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so the timelines are kind of up in the air. Which programs are going to be is kind of up in the air. But what's not up in the air is the people who are going to get those opportunities are the people that have the strongest skill set, have the strongest crew, and are really ready for that growth. Yeah. I mean, I haven't, like, I'm just just silly to say, well, you know, now I'm all pissed off because I thought I was going to have an opportunity in Phoenix, and that's what I was trying to do here in Oklahoma City and get back to, but now I don't have that opportunity. That's, like, so silly because, like, nobody knows what the opportunity is or isn't going to be. But what I can tell you is it's really not motivating for me to hear that because that means that you're you're not really focused on being in this business or the opportunity or your long-term goals. You're just kind of focused on you want to live in Phoenix which is fine, but if that's the end-all, be-all, and we can't guarantee that for you, then I would hate to see you waste another six months of your life in this business 
hoping that you're going to get something that may or may not happen. Yeah, I honestly, I, like, I don't, I haven't made a decision yet. Right now, I'm, I'm just, like, it was, it's been a crazy week. So, I'm just sort of freaking out a little bit. Because moving is expensive. Um, I, I just didn't, you, obviously, like, no one plans to, like, go into that. So oh, I didn't, and you wouldn't plan this. And, and you and, yeah, and you and your, but again, it's kind of like it goes back to, hey, shit blows up in your world, what's the most important to you? Like, that's what you have to figure out. Like, if it, like, I get that it's going to cost money to move. I get that you're stuck in this lease and you're going to have to do something to get out of it. I, I understand all those things. But where there's a will, there's a way. Like, I'm sure if you are from Phoenix and you know people in Phoenix, you could probably couch surf for a second when you first get there. You could probably find a really inexpensive apartment that you could sublease or sublet month to month or whatever. Like, I'm sure that you could figure that out. So that even if you have to keep paying your apartment in Oklahoma City, which I'm assuming can't possibly be a ton of money, Oklahoma City doesn't have crazy overhead, then you could probably find a place in Phoenix that you and your wife can share and split. And between the two places, like, you'll probably be able to cover that, especially if you're doing a great job and you're very focused on, you know, recovering yourself in business and you're focused on recruiting and training and developing and you're making owner's profit and all that stuff. Some of the owner's profit will go back to your short for sure, but some of it can go back to you personally. We can work out some deal to help make sure that, you know, we're stacking your deck personally, financially as much as you can. Yeah. I guess so what I really want to... Your stuff and moving, probably going to be a couple thousand bucks at the most. Yeah. And again, that's probably something that you guys could either put on credit cards or... You know, again, we could work out where, you know, we loan it to you, you pay us back, or, you know, whatever. Like, there's things that we can do to help you out. If you do a great job with inventory on your closeout and you do a great job, like, you know, selling off your displays and stuff like that, we can cut you a deal where, like, hey, you're going to get a chunk of that money back to you, you know, whatever we don't have to have in a burn that, you know, whatever money we're not going backwards, we can, like, help you out with. So there's ways that we can make that work. But, again, it's not – it's kind of – I'm a little skeptical if it would even be the right move at this point for you to do the retrain, knowing that the things that you're hung up on are, the, like, the, the, the easy temporary things that we've been telling you, hey, we can come up with a plan and work something out. But we're still stuck on those negatives which kind of, it's not a good sign. It's not a good sign that you're just, like, so desperate to do whatever it takes to still be in this business. Well, I'm just worried that... The best retrain candidates are the people that are like that, you know, where they're like, hey, I get it. I got to get better. Okay, cool. I'll do whatever because I know that this is where I'm destined to be. I know that this is what I want to put my attention in on and, and really hammer this home and get great at it. Those are the candidates that do very well. But the people where they're like, hey, if everything's not perfectly lined up and I know exactly how everything's going to happen, that's just not how our business works anyways. So people like that tend to have a harder time in our business anyways. So I guess yeah. like what I was hoping for on this call was for you to either have a decision like, yes, I definitely know I want to be an owner long term in this business and I'm willing to do whatever it takes, but here's the list of six different expenses that I have no idea how I'm going to be able to manage. Can you help me manage these expenses and help me figure out a game plan on how I can pack up and, and go? Or I was hoping you'd come to this phone call with, hey, thanks, but no thanks. The thought of moving and all this other stuff is just way too stressful. I'm just going to camp out here. I'm going to find a job. And then when my wife and I, it makes sense, we're going to pack up and then move back to Phoenix whenever we want and do our own thing from here. And that's fine, too. But it's just kind of a difficult situation if you're like, hey, I don't really know if I want to be an owner or not because it depends on how I'm going to move and where I'm going to be able to open up, you know, down the line when I rebuilt my crew and fix my skill set and all that stuff. That's not really something we can really work with. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, no, my major thing is, like, I just don't want to ever be, like, stranded anywhere ever again. But I don't, I'm just trying to be more logical than, like, impulsive. That's why I haven't made a decision yet because I love this business and I've sacrificed a lot. So, of course, like, I want to, like, see it pay off. But the thing is, if I'm, like, if I make the decision to retrain, I really don't want to screw over because he's not profiting by me going back. And then if I change my mind, then I I just wasted everyone's time. So I'm just trying not to be so impulsive. I'm like, I need it. And I totally appreciate that. I definitely appreciate that. And I see where you're coming from. And I know that we're like, it probably feels like we're asking you to make a major life decision in like 30 seconds and your world is spinning and all that stuff. So I understand that. But I guess my point is, I think if you're even worried, hey, if I get to Phoenix and I realize I don't want to do this anymore, I'm just telling you I think that's your answer. But I also, like, didn't expect to close and, like, even consider returning them and shake them up a little still. So I'm just not thinking logically. Like, I've I've been in the field all day. I, I'm not – I'm just not – I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I just don't have – an answer, I don't want to rule it out. Like, I appreciate the offer. Uh, I don't want to say no to it. I just don't want to say yes unless I'm 100% sure. And I haven't, like, really even thought about it. Like, whenever we talked about returning before, I never, like, really thought about it. I was like, yeah, like, I'm not going to let that happen. And then whenever I resource, like, yeah, like, go 10 grand is that to, like, go $20,000 up. So I didn't think it was, like, that bad that I'm $5,000 is that I'm like, I get it. Like, I'm I'm fixing everything and working on this like constantly, constantly, constantly. So I'm just kind of like, and here's the thing, and let me address that because it it wouldn't be that big of a deal for you to go back five thousand if you were running a business that was running, you know, eight or nine shows with like a six fifty net average, and you just had a couple rough rotations where people had really low averages, but you fixed it, you're back on track, and we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. And why do you think it wouldn't be that big of a deal if you were negative five grand, but that was your situation? I was profit. So I've been like, I've been trying to profit. I've been trying to go up in shows. I've been trying to build leaders. Well, I've been trying yeah, to recruit my own. Not even because you're going to profit. I mean, partially, you're partially right because, yeah, you would profit much faster. So we know that in two rotations, you'd probably be positive money again and back on track, right? So yeah. for sure, from a financial standpoint, you're exactly right we know that you're going to be able to recoup that loss pretty quickly. But it's something else I'm looking for. There's another reason why we would let you in that situation go 5,000 negative, and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. What else do you think it could be? I mean, obviously, if you're creating more growth, so I wouldn't have the risk of going back again. Well, I mean, hey, everybody has the risk of going backwards, but... What it tells us if you're running eight or nine shows with that type of NCR and you just had a couple of rough rotations, which is why you did that, I know that you have the skill set to retain a business with probably, you know, eight to ten leaders and a bunch of new guys. And I know that you've been doing that long enough that I can trust that you have the ability on your own to, to, to fix it. Yeah. But in your situation, when you've been struggling at, you know, one to three liters for months and months and months, and we just can't get above that hump, then I know that the obvious thing is we need to help you relearn the skill set on how to become an expert recruiter, an expert retrainer, and an expert duplicator. Mm. Because I know that if an owner is struggling to have more than three leaders on their roll call for months and months and months at a time, that there's definite weaknesses in that owner's skill set that can't ever probably be fixed on their own. They need the help of someone to reteach them how to do that. Yeah. And so because of that, when an owner in that situation goes 5,000 negative, I know it's it's going to be so much tougher, not just for them to recoup that 5000 and get back to positive again, because it's going to take so many rotations of them being absolutely perfect just to profit money. But I also know that 
they might never make it because I don't know if they have the skill set to get out of it because they don't, they haven't shown that they have the skill set to hire and train four or five leaders in a two-month span of time and fix it on their own. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it really is just like logical business sense that at this point, the only real answer is for us to help you in a way where we can pull you on a retrain and reteach you that part of the business. And you got to just figure out, are you truly, like, excited to do that? Or do you look at it like, oh, fuck, i got to redo all of this stuff again. And usually when someone's in this situation, their gut is really tugging in one direction or the other. It's rare when someone's kind of in the middle. I'm in the middle. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. I just, I feel just like really trapped in Oklahoma and all I want to do is go and I'm, I can't. Why can't you? I don't, how? I can pull, you like, pack up your stuff and you put it in your car <laughs> and you can drive it to wherever you want to be. Right, but I have to have income to get a U-Haul. I have to have income to pay for a deposit in a new place, and we don't have So I guess we're about to use, and maybe I'm just doing a really bad job explaining this, but I'm saying to you, hey, if you said, hey, I know for sure I want to do this business, and I know for sure I want to do X, Y, and Z, then you can come together with a list of stuff with, like, hey, here's what it's going to take for us to do X, Y, and Z. We can tell you, hey, we can help you with this part, portion of it. The rest of the portion, you're going to have to do something, put it on credit or whatever. Or maybe your wife stays back. Well, my credit is maxed out. If you move. My, my credit's maxed out, and she's not willing to use her credit card. So, like, I could come up with listed expenses, but it's still, like, I know the majority of my income right now needs to go towards, like, all of the debt. So, right. So, so I think that I if, if your wife isn't willing to put anything on credit and you guys are kind of stuck there, Then why doesn't she just stay there and you personally pack a suitcase and get in your car and drive to go on the retrain and then however long it takes you to bank up money to get her, you know, maybe you let the lease run out and then she meets up with you in Phoenix. Yeah, it's a possibility. Um, Maybe it's a lot of ways that we can work out a few thousand bucks. Like, I don't think it would ever take you more than $2,000, literally, to pack up your belongings and move. Yeah, that's the drive of existence. That's what we don't have. Like, we don't have it. Oh. Are you, I'm sorry to, like, interject. Are you listening to, to what I was saying? Yeah, I just think, like, I need to go so through, like, my expenses. She keeps throwing solutions at you and saying, hey, if you are serious about this retrain, that in addition to the five grand that she's already handed over to you to try to keep your business afloat, that she's willing to help you with moving expenses, and all you keep doing is throwing the same negative back out about how, woe is me, I don't have it. Oh. And I, it would be I'm another... Sorry, but like, I have to be so aggressive with my tone but Liz has been so patient for the last 28 minutes that, like, I don't even know. I I don't have that kind of patience. But, like, you're either not listening or you just, like, don't even want that option. Well, no, it sounds like it's more debt. So what I'm what asking... sounds like it's more debt? What, what I want to know is, like, how can I get myself out of debt here before I move back? Whether I'm retraining or not, retraining, not, 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 not in this business. That's what, I don't want to take out or borrow anyone else's money and try to lower my overhead. You're, so, so then I think that's the answer then, which is totally fine. So then we'll close down the business on Sunday. We'll make sure that we get inventory counters there and everything like that. We'll make sure that we get, you know, your inventory wrapped up and stuff like that. And what I'm even willing to do is saying, hey, if you do a phenomenal job and you work with us, 
really well and, you know, the inventory short is like slim to none and your displays are all gathered up and shipped off to so that can, you know, sell it and, and we can try and recoup the 5000 bucks that we've already loaned you, um, then, you know, I'd be willing to say, hey, we'll throw you a $1,000 um, to say, hey, thank you so much, and we're sorry it didn't work out, and hopefully that helps you during your transition so you can find another position in Oklahoma City, you know, in a couple weeks. It'll buy you a couple weeks to find another position. Oh, got it. And then the two of you guys can stay in Oklahoma City. You can write out the term of your lease and then do whatever you want to do from there. Yeah. I feel like I, that's probably the best solution based on, like, like, how this conversation is going. No, I just feel like a bad day, and I feel like I'm being really pressured into making a decision, like, right now. And I don't I don't have it. I don't want it made for me. I just, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, so then, and that's fine. So we think what we do is we just close down shop and we just assume that the retrain is probably not going to happen. You can take as much time as you want. And if you want to give us a call in a few weeks or a month and say, hey, listen, actually, I'm I'm motivated to consider the retrain. If we still have something for you at that point, then we can go from there. Um, but we might not. We might say, hey, actually, you know, we've already, we're already, we've moved on. Okay. Um, okay, what do I tell my guys? Can I tell now that I'm dissolving so they can take over my crew? Like, I know, I don't, what we can do is, yeah, we can talk to for sure. So, like, we'll probably want to do a call with give them a heads up or whatever. And then I think probably what would be good is on Sunday night teardown, um, for you to have involved in your teardown. And then I would tell the guys during teardowns, hey, listen, um, I'm really sorry, but, you know, I've, uh, I'm going to make a change with where my focus is and what I would choose to do with my career. Um, but the great news is, is that for those of you guys that are still really excited about your opportunity in building your business, you have an opportunity to, to interview with I would say, you know, it's up to if he wants to hire them or not. So I wouldn't automatically guarantee anybody unless he already told you that he's cool with it and he wants to have them. Yeah. So I think, like, let's get a list of her roll call and then let's talk to and get to start maybe doing, like, some one-on-ones with them the rest of this week or something. So he can kind of feel them out and have an idea. And then on Sunday night, he can sit down with the group of people that he's interested in, you know, and they can start to do fill out, like, the digi-docs and stuff like that. Um, he can get out all of them to fill it out and then can just absorb whoever he wants to starting Sunday night. And I love that because that way we're still coming through for the, for your guys, which is great, which is huge for you to do. And then, you know, and and you guys can talk, you know, whenever it's convenient for you guys to go through the list of the closing down procedures. Um, and you might want to try and pop out there for like 48 hours, like right before the inventory counter comes. But for the most important thing for you um, for us to be able to give you, like, a bonus check on your way out, which I'm sure will be helpful for you, the best thing that you can do is just, like, really be all over the inventory. So drive to the stores, make sure that there's nothing that your guys have left behind, um, you know, make sure that when the counter's there, like, you're there, you know, counting everything, signing off on it, taking pictures. I would make sure that you get all the displays rounded up. Um, if you wants to purchase any displays, that's great, or, you know, drop ship them to, to – and we can probably stick them on a pallet for you and send them to you. And then that way you can, you know, um, one by one start selling them off. Okay. Recoup some of the loss there. Um, but I think that sounds good. And then, like, if you realize, like, the end of next week or something that you're like, oh, my gosh, I really wish I did that retrain. I'm going to miss this. You know, I really want to be an owner. That's what I want to do. Then I think that would be, like, soon enough for us to be able to still – honor that and do that but it's like once it gets to be like two three four or five weeks later um the chances of us being able to do something about that are, are going to go down yeah as far as like us you know helping you financially and stuff like that yeah i just i don't want to yeah and if so, and when you get back to Phoenix, you're more than welcome to call 
be like, hey, can I start, you know, can I start entry level and rebuild a crew and all that stuff for sure. But I think, like, we need to be making a decision. Like, if, if you're going to ask for financial help, we kind of need to have an understanding of what that means sooner versus later. That would just be, like, the respectful thing to do for us. I just don't want you calling us three weeks from now saying, hey, so it's going to cost me $6,000 to move, and I'm expecting you to, to help out with that. And we're like, whoa, didn't even know you wanted to still be in this business. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I just wanted to, like, take the week. I didn't want to. But it sounds like this decision isn't mine anymore, and I'm staying down on Sunday. Which, well, I mean, that's fine. Like, the business on Regardless, we have to close the business on Sunday. It's losing money. Yeah. And it's losing money that you don't have. And to my earlier example, it makes zero sense for us to keep you in business when we know you're going to lose money and we know you're not going to stay in Oklahoma City. Because it's, yeah. you know, you're, going to, you're going to opt to get healthy and learn the skills that you need to have to run a healthy business and you're going to opt for the retrain, which we would right. want to get you started with right away so that you can start making money for yourself personally, first and foremost, but, and then, you know, start making money to put towards the moving costs that we could loan you or whatever we would want to do if you really want the free train. But there, the, there is no option of keeping you in business in Oklahoma City. That option is not there because you don't have the money to keep your business open. Okay. No different from the real world. Your business is officially out of business. Yeah. So okay. it's not your decision to keep your business open when it's not your money. No different from any business on the planet. It is your decision if you want to continue to be in this business and have an opportunity to make money in this business and pay down your short in this business and, you know, pay off moving expenses in this business. That is 100% your decision. Yeah. But it's um, definitely a time sensitive decision because yeah. if we're gonna be involved helping you financially, it's only fair to give us an opportunity to get a plan together that's gonna make financial business sense too. Okay. But if fair. you're saying, Hey, listen, I don't need any help with anything, no problem. I get it. All right, my business is gonna close down on Sunday, no problem. But I wanna take my time and really think about what I wanna do. That's totally fine. And like I mentioned, if you show up in Phoenix three months from now, knock on the door and hang out. And you guys can chat and see if you want to get back involved. That's no problem. But if you're going to expect us to help you in some way financially, then we need to make those decisions now because we need to make sure that the decision makes sense. Because if you came to us and you said, hey, I'll do the retrain if you give me 10000 bucks to move, I'm going to tell you that's just not possible. We just can't swing that. But if you come to us yeah. and say, hey, I need to just borrow 2000 bucks to move and I want to do this retrain, that's 100% doable and we'll make that happen for you. So that's more what we, what we need to figure out is, number one, do you even want to be in this business anymore? And number two, if you do, what is it going to take on our end to help you get there? And then we have to assess, is that realistic or not? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, I'm not asking for, like, I don't want a handout, and then I don't, I don't even need $10,000, you know? I I just don't. Yeah, I want to think about it. I want to make a decision based on, like, like logical thoughts, and I just, I'm, burnt, I'm, like, mentally burned out right now, and I'm just shaken up. So, yeah, I don't want to say no, and I don't want to say... Um, like yes, hundred percent. Until I'm like, hundred percent. Yeah, like no else at all. Because if I if I ever just again, like I never want to be in this position again. This is pretty shitty, and it's not anyone's fault but mine. But like, you know, it's it's not like what I worked my ass off. Uh, you know what? Like, you know what? It's gonna it's gonna happen again though. Maybe not that you're like completely down and out, but you're gonna forever go through ups and downs if you want to be yeah. a business owner. And I'm fine with that. I just never want to feel like. I want to control their goes my business again. And I just, you know, I, I never want to like put myself in that position again. Where I just, like, work my ass off and, like, 
I love the experience, but, like, I need to, like, start digging my way out of, like, all other areas of debt in my life, too. So I would just never want to do this again if it wasn't, like, a positive outcome. So that's what I'm thinking about. So that's just honestly what I'm thinking about. I I know that's, like, I don't mind if I, like, have $20,000 if I lose 10. I'm not, that's, I don't care about that. But if I'm like, well, I can't afford my groceries and I can't do that stuff and I'm working 80 hours a week consistently, then, like, like what am I doing? But I love the business, but if I'm just not that good at it, then I don't, then I can't be in it. Well, I think all of that goes back to you just need to get retrained if you're going to be successful in this business, right? Because to your point, I think you've been working 80 hours a week, not being able to buy groceries for way too long. And we probably should have pulled you on a retrain six months ago. Yeah. Because your experience as an owner is not our ideal experience as an owner. Now, is everyone that becomes an owner successful? Of course not. But our business didn't grow and become uber successful, and Larry didn't make hundreds of millions off of owners never making money and always failing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's definitely not how we got to where we are in this business. We got to where no, we are in this business because a ton of people become successful and, and, and have great stories and, you know, um, yeah. do incredible things with their career. Kind of like a negative perception towards the business. Like that's why I want to make sure my guys like have an opportunity with me. It's like I don't I'm not I don't like doubt that it it can be done. I just want to make sure that like I can do it. If I'm like, well shit, like maybe it's just not I don't know. Because I want to be good at whatever I want. And I think it goes back to back to like where there's a will, there's a way. If you really want to get great at this business and you're willing to make the sacrifices and do whatever it takes, you'll get great at this business. Yeah. Anybody can do this business, but it it takes a lot of time, practice, effort, ups and downs, learning curves, and stuff like that. And some people just don't want to have the stomach to go through all that stuff, which I get. Like, there's a lot of my closest friends and family here that would have never, like, wanted to do half the shit that I did to get to where I am. And I totally don't blame them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it's it's definitely okay to look at it and be like, fuck, I think I'm just done. I'm just mentally burned out. I'm toasted. I just kind of want to do something where I can, like, relax at the end of the day, turn my brain off, and, like, hang out. Like, that's totally fine. And if that's where you're at right now, then it's probably going to be better for you to move on and find something else to do because if you want to do the retrain, the next 12 months are going to be really intense. The next 12 months would be really intense to hopefully stack your deck and have an unbelievable next four or five years. But there still are going to be ups and downs. There still are going to be unknowns. It's always going to be a risk. It's your business. You're the one in control of it for better or for worse. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing. And it's definitely a risky thing always, right? Yeah. But I think that's what you have to really think about. That it shouldn't be about is it going to be 2000 to move or 4000 It shouldn't really – that shouldn't really be making the decision. The decision should be deep in your heart. You really have the stomach to do this and make it work and make it happen. Yeah. Or are you kind of like been there, done that? I just want to kind of do something different because you could be amazing at anything you do, this business or anything else, but it has to be something that you personally want to do no matter what. Otherwise, it's never going to happen. Yeah. So I just want you to think about that. And again, I would love to give you a thousand bucks and say, hey, like here's the bonus, even though you owe us five, because you did a great job with inventory, because you did a great job getting, you know, wrapping everything up, here's a thousand bucks. So we'll go more in debt to help you and come through for you because we want we want to do that. We want to make sure that we buy you some time to find another position. No problem. Like we would love to do that. And yeah. if you come to us and you say, Hey, I need to borrow two thousand bucks because I need help to move because I really want to do this then we'll help you work out the logistics and we'll go through some sort of plan for that. 
if either way okay. we want to help you, but we can't we can't just take like five weeks to make a decision. We just don't have that time. Yeah. Unless you want to figure it all out on your own and then show up one day in Phoenix and then see what's going on. And that's fine yeah. too. No, I get it. I know. have no way of creating income for you, you know, right. after this Sunday unless you want to think about the future. So I guess, like, the best thing short-term for me to do is go solo and just see how much money I can make. And then... For sure. Yeah. Yeah. For okay. sure. So, I mean, again, like, have a good, healthy heart-to-heart with yourself. Have a heart-to-heart with your wife. And come back to and I, you know, hopefully by Friday, end of the day Friday, and let us know what to do. Yeah. And that way, yeah. you and I have some time to talk to and then make sure that we start getting, like, all the inventory stuff booked and, um, you know, start the conversations with Rose's team, you know, to start the dissolution process and all that stuff. And then you can come back to us Friday afternoon and say, hey, guys, I want to do it. Let's make some plans to pack up and move next week. Or you can come back to us and say, hey, I think I just want to do a really good job with inventory, do a really good job with displays, make sure I close everything down properly and take my 1000 bucks and, and go do something different. And that's fine, too. The choice is 100% yours. You have all the control in the world to make the choice. Yeah. I know. Um, all right, I'll let you know by Friday. Can I talk to you first? I won't say anything like negative. I just want... I would just rather let him know first. Okay. Because I'm going to see his guys tomorrow. Like, we share... We do meetings at New York on Thursday, meetings in his office on Friday. Um, so we've been working a lot together, so I don't. I would rather it come from me. And I think you should be like, okay. if I was doing well, I would be excited to have, you know, like less competition in my market and like have more, like hand over a crew of like guys with potential. <laughs> so I'd rather just like, yeah, talk to him about that. And explain why no, from, like, sure. my that's, perspective, you know. Yeah, that's fine. And then, you know, of course, maybe we want to talk to you, too, about kind of cherry-picking what shows he wants and what shows we're going to get rid of and all that stuff, too. So yeah. you can send emails to yeah. That would be great. Yep. And then just let us know when you've touched base with, um, with um, yeah. that way and I can can talk to him and, and talk through, like, how to do the little joint meeting on Sunday night. Okay. Yeah, I want to talk to him in person. I'm not going to see him tomorrow. He's just sending his crew to meet in the side in the morning. But I'll let you know once I do talk to him. Um, and then, okay, what do I, I guess I just have to tell him more about, like, and and see, like, how to come up with a game plan for my admin. Because he actually is, like, the only one I've really seen potential in and talking about there. I'm yeah, like, and maybe have a, a need for her, too. Who knows? Like, yeah. maybe he, you know, she can help him out with something, too. So that's another yeah. part of that conversation that we can have for sure. Okay. Yeah, I want to make sure um, I talk to her before, like, the office she does, you know? I don't want to blind sit or just like on um, Well, I, I really wouldn't tell your I really wouldn't tell your admin before your rep no because your admin's probably going to tell your rep and then you're going to have people quitting and walking out over on the shows on you on the weekend and then you're going to have all the teardowns to do yourself. Okay. Like compliance issues with the yin yang. So I I really would tell your admin like on Sunday night Monday. Okay. Yeah, like I would, I would probably tell her Monday, like face to face, and hopefully by then we'll have figured out options for her. Like maybe she wants to use her as a remote booker. Maybe yeah. she can utilize her. So that way you're not going to like walk up and and say, hey, by the way, I'm quitting. I don't know what's going to happen with you, Beth, but I'll I'll get mm-hmm. back to you on that. She's going to freak out. You know, it's way better to wait I wanna until we have a game plan. Yeah, like, yeah. in that way, you know, you can talk to her Monday and say, hey, listen, like, I'm going to move in a different direction, but good news is you've got door number one, two, or three to pick from, you know, and then that way yeah. it'll be a way more positive situation for her. I mean, this is not, like, a 
like something you could answer, but when an owner closes, they typically lose a lot of the crew. Um, it really depends on the situation. Because like they have no idea with these people. No, yeah, I know. It depends on how you package and present it to them. If they has a great right. relationship and they're excited to move into his office, then chances are they'll be retained. Some people have been, are, you know, sometimes they're really locked into you, the owner that's leaving. So sometimes when you leave, they'll be like, well, if she's leaving, I probably want to leave too, you know. So it is what it is. Um, it, it's it it's really great that it's in the market to take them on whoever is still motivated. So, so if I just it's great that they yeah. have the option. Yeah, I agree. So I just want to be like honest with them without saying like the negative. So I want to make sure I'm having like an, you know a good convo with them. If I'm like, hey, and I'd rather do like one on ones. Um, it's going to be different with like my new hires that started today. And like my leaders that have been around for a few months, so I'd rather just be honest and say like I just really miss Phoenix and I like hit all my goals. I don't want to make the business sound ugly, you know. Um, so I can feel like I have an opportunity to like work in the office, but I'm not really sure what I want to do like long term right now. So all I know is I'm I'm just gonna move. But like the opportunity is there for you to work with me if you want it, and you would love to have you if. He's okay with – he's still laid back. I'm sure he'll be fine if I'm, like, hey, can I send everyone over unless there's, like, red flag people? I think it's kind of pointless for us to have this conversation because it's really up to so, – Yeah, I guess I just wanted to back on my – When we get there. Yeah, I just wanted to back on my conversation, but I will talk to – On your conversation with – or with your rep? Yeah. It's like, yeah, just what I, yeah, with my reps, like the thing, I, I just want to, I like hit my goals, I want to move back. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's fine if you tell your guys like, hey, listen, you know, right now my goals have, have changed. I, I think it just depends on what you're going to do. So I think it still goes back to step one is figure out what do you want to do, right? Because yeah. if you're going to go back to Phoenix on a retrain, then it's a very simple conversation like, hey, guys, I'm realizing that as I'm running my business, I think that there's different areas that I, I want to just get even better at. And so my personal, you know, request was to go, you know, I called and said, hey, can I come back and just like shadow you again for a few more months because I really want to get better at a few different skill sets to help me become the best coach that I can possibly be for, for my office. So basically because you guys are all here, it's an awesome opportunity for you to kind of fold into, you know, working with and having your opportunity. And I'm going to go back to Phoenix and, you know, I personally want to just like work side by side and fine tune some of my skill sets again before I reopen. And I might reopen back here in Oklahoma City. I might stay in Phoenix. I might go somewhere else. Who really knows? The first thing that I do want to focus on, though, is just like developing even better skill sets in the areas that I know I want to get better at. And part of this business is always being a great student. And so I just want to kind of go back to being the student and, and you know, have some fun doing that. So if yeah. you go on the retrain, that's probably the conversation I would have. And then, of course, you can promote the situation. He's flying. He's doing great. You know, blah, blah, blah. You guys are going to be in great hands. I'm so excited for you. Still keep in touch. You know, like still call me anytime. You know, blah, blah, blah. I'm still in the business. I'm just a couple cities away. But if you're choosing to go in a different direction, then it's a different conversation you'd have with your people. Then that conversation would be like, hey, guys, I really hit all my goals. I'm so excited for what I was able to learn. This has been an incredible experience. But at this point, you know, I'm realizing that I want to kind of move in a different direction. That said, I'm really excited because it gives you guys an opportunity to work directly with and he's absolutely on fire. He's got an outside deal. He's getting involved in HSC. He's doing this. He's doing that. Like, everything's really exciting. So you guys are going to be in incredible hands, you know, working with him and blah, blah, blah. So step one is figure out what you want to do. Step two is talk to him and just make sure, like, that he's on board with absorbing everybody. If he is, then you can have that conversation with everyone. And if he's not, then you kind of have the conversation with everyone that, you know, you're you're choosing to go in a different direction, the business is closing. And then you ask certain people to hang back, and then those are the certain people that you have a meeting with about working for his office. Yeah. 
Yeah, it depends on where you're going. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll let you know on Friday. Okay, cool. Well, and then in the meantime, we'll just um, get focused on, we'll just make sure that you're going through the list of the checklist with her in terms of, you know, how to shut everything down and what to do. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Just the typical closing procedures and all that jazz. You got it. Okay, cool. Is there anything that I missed? No? Um, no, you covered everything. Okay, cool. All right, we'll keep us posted. Let us know. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye.